Iraq is in the headlines every day, but the voices seldom heard are those of the women. Since the invasion seven years ago, three quarters of a million women have been widowed. Tens of thousands have been forced into exile, and those remaining struggle to survive. In the early 70s, Haifa Zangana was a political prisoner of the Ba'athist regime and was held in the notorious Abu Ghraib prison. For many years, she and her husband have made their home in the United Kingdom. Haifa is a poet, painter, novelist, and guardian columnist. She lectures regularly on Iraqi culture, literature, and women's issues, and still dreams of Baghdad. This month is the publication of Haifa Zangana's new book, Dreaming of Baghdad. You were a prisoner of Saddam Hussein. Well, it wasn't Saddam actually, it was the Ba'ath regime, and, right. but uh, he was the deputy at that time. Right. So, as yes, I know, I'm this is the first book written by an Iraqi woman about that experience in a prison and in Iraq. Well, this is part of my diary in Abu Ghraib prison, August the 20th. Slowly, I followed the big woman's steps. She was in her 40s. Her hair was jet black, and her body a huge mass of fat that vibrated with every step, left, right, left, right, leg down, left, right. I did not know what to do with my right hand. I kept trying to adjust the strap of my handbag, but then I realized it wasn't there. I wasn't carrying anyone. I put my hands in the pockets of my navy blue skirt, took them out, put them back in. Slowly, I followed the guard's steps. She was wearing a gray uniform. The walls, floor, and ceiling were concrete. Were the women made of the same substance? The front of each cell was made of iron bars with a door on the right-hand side. There were two rows of cells with iron bars facing each other. The corridor was a yard wide. To maintain some privacy, the women knotted old grey blankets to the bars to serve as bizarre makeshift curtains. Many eyes stared at me, the eyes of women with their bodies wrapped in black clothes. The whole place was black and grey like an old family photo. The women's faces were a strange colour, not pale in the usual way, but they held the pillars of illness and fatigue. In their faces I beheld the dryness and cracking of earth that has suffered drought for many years. The concrete floor did not nourish seeds. The light bulbs, surrounded by wire, did not give light. The guard stopped at the last cell and told the three women behind bars, this is the new prisoner. She is political. She pronounced the words slowly and firmly, as if introducing a new breed of animal. Then she left. Uh, a year before the invasion of Iraq. I, I don't think a writer can, a novelist can write a novel while the country is occupied and I just can't. Uh, I got to the point of not being able to. If you had to go into exile with five minutes to pack, what would you take with you? Actually something which I still um, have uh, I kept it over the years and that was a stone uh, uh, it was given to me while I was in a prison and then my mother uh, took it from me she put a piece of gold around it like a, uh, a net around it of gold and pearls three pearls at the bottom of it and she put a chain 
and uh, that stone because the woman who gave it to me in a prison she said that will keep the evil eye and I have it still uh, with me thank you Thank you.